Hello Booktube, I'm new here, please be gentle with me. Today I would like to talk a bit about J.L. Carr's modern classic novella, A Month in the Country. This is a book that I wouldn't normally pick up because I tend to avoid world war stories, I find them a bit repetitive in their themes, um, but I'm really glad I, pi I picked this one up. It was recommended as my first read for a new book group that I've just joined, uh, which is a lot of firsts for me. I really liked this book because of the tone and the character and um, tonight's discussion with the book group really has made me feel a bit pumped to actually discuss it because normally I don't feel that I've got enough that's new or original or interesting or informed enough to to publish or to say um, or to begin a discussion. J.L. Carr apparently wrote this book later on in life. Um, his wife was dying he was looking back uh, on a younger age, a time past. He knew the area that he was writing about and he had been a soldier. So this book is very much a piece of him and his actual life. It feels like a memoir. It's very calm and peaceful and retrospective and passive. And it feels like the re replaying of a dream or a memory. It feels like something that has stuck with him not necessarily because of any major drama during that time. There's not much. There's not much action. Um, there's not. Not a whole lot happens, but it feels to me anyway worth exploring, and it feels very much like he's exploring fantasies and memories in a safe environment, like a dream. The protagonist is Tom Birkin. He is an ex-soldier from World War One. He is in his early 20s and he has been given this job in the country to come and restore a mural on the ceiling of a church. This didn't sound like the kind of story that I would normally pick up, I thought, mm. um, but a lot of what I enjoyed about the book was actually the introspective um, sense of humour and perception of the world around Birkin. Um, I felt quite akin to his understanding of the world, there were moments uh, that were quite poetic and I felt like he understands the world in a way which I appreciate and connect with and I trusted, I trusted his judgement in a way that I similarly found with Nick Carraway in The Great Gatsby. Um, I felt like I'd met a friend by the end of reading this book which is always great. I'm reading another book at the moment which is post-World War I and that is The Lie by Helen Dunmore, recommended by a judge friend, and if they don't know good books, who does? The Lie is a much colder experience, it's a lot less pleasant, um, it is set up as a much more foreboding story, but there are massive parallels between The Lie and A Month in the Country. The protagonists are both male expat World War One soldiers, come home to England and dealing with the fallout of the war. They are now very changed people, they have had experiences which they, for whatever reason, can't communicate with other people. Um, in The Lie, it feels more that there's a barricade um, built of the protagonist's expectations and perhaps unfounded expectations of other people's understanding of the war or lack of understanding of the war. In A Month in the Country, there is a moment when Birkin actually does, in his account anyway, reach out and try to compare his one of his experiences from the war to something that um, a woman says and it's quite sad because um, he says this thing and then he says, I don't think she heard me though and that's it, that's all that's said and so for whatever reason um, you feel very isolated with this character and similarly in The Lie um, there's this big segregation between people who have been through the war and people who have been through people who've been through the war abroad and people who have been through the war on the home front and uh, this is kind of reflected in uh, what tends to be a lone wafy woman character who usually isn't allowed much depth um, but is more projected onto by the male protagonist. Um, they look upon these women as potentially um, a way to fill a gap. In A Month in the Country, this is Mrs Keach, 
who is the local vicar's wife. All we really know about her is that she's very beautiful in the protagonist's eyes and that's fine. She's very nice and pleasant and that's it really. She doesn't really say much. The characters don't seem to have much impact on each other's lives, although Birkin's rejection of Mrs Keach could possibly be um, the catalyst for the Keaches moving out of the village. Maybe not, but I like to think that that story is told for a reason um, and that there is a sort of connection there and that perhaps they're more alike than they believe in the beginning or in their minds and what connects Birkin and Mrs Keach is that they both think a lot of things that they don't say and they perhaps don't reach out in time, um, don't take decisive, um, overt enough action to fulfil their fantasies or to, you know, uh, move their lives forward in a direction that they uh, would like to. Overall, I really rated this book. I will read it again. I wouldn't have thought to pick it up before, but please don't judge books by their synopses or their covers or yada yada, because there was a lot in this book that I really got, actually. The poetic narration, at times poetic, um, I really connected with, and I wouldn't pass up on that if I had known that I would get this much out of it before leaping into it. So I'm glad I gave it a chance and I would really recommend that everybody else does as well. It's very accessible, it's very quick and easy um, and it's quite cheap on Kindle so if you don't want to buy the beautiful paperback you can always get it on there. So thanks and I hope you've enjoyed this review. I will try and post another one that isn't so long soon. <laughs>